going live here as well. I think we're live. Hi, we're live. Do me a favor. If you're watching this at home, just pinch yourself and feel if you can feel that uh, this is live. This is happening. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'm Rabbi Brian. This is the Saturday service. It is number 212 of these services. And it is currently where I am. It is April the 27th, 2024. I am joined by a whole group of people. And if I hit the keystrokes properly, there's the people. Hi, people. Hi. Hi. All right. And then let's take that view down. Go back to regular old view. Um, if you're watching on Facebook and... I can oh I can see hey, some people are that's wonderful. Um, Joe, are you able to watch the chat on Facebook? No, Maria, do you have that? That oh you do, fantastic. So we have um, Facebook streaming and there's a live chat in the Zoom group. And if you want to join us on Zoom, please make sure to do that. At uh, I can't put the address up right now, but. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Um, hey, we're going to do this to start with. Read. Yeah. It's going to take a little extra moment and not rush. I've got a whole outline of things to talk about, but what we get to, we get to. And I'm going to take a breath of air. Hi, Doug and Missy and Rita and Sari and Ruth. Good to see you guys back and Ray and... Uh, and all the people who joined before we started going live. Hi, Paula and Betsy Ann and Jeff. Uh-oh, now I'm committed to saying hi to everyone. And Bruce and Steve and Betsy <laughs> and Joe <laughs> and Patricia and um, Mason, whose name's not on the screen, but I know who you are. <laughs> oh, and the boxes Strong are boy. moving. And hi, Emily and Candice and Meg. And hi, John <laughs> Boy. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary <laughs> Ellen and Ann and... Maria, does anyone remember? I think it was Romper Room. Romper Room. Romper yeah. Room. Okay. Yes. I was on Romper Room. Just let let you know. Ooh. Ooh. And she, oh. I know. I'm cool. And <laughs> no. Miss Marianne used to look out into the camera and say hello to people, um, yeah. but she was making that up because she didn't know who was actually watching. And I know who's actually, I can see you, so I, I say welcome, welcome, glad glad you guys are here. Um, last week was an exciting week here in Religion Outside the Box land, because last week we had Religion Outside the Box membership cards. We, we uh, I'd say we gave out membership cards, but it wasn't really giving out membership cards. It was more, I said to people, please take a piece of paper and make yourself your very own religion yeah. outside the box membership card. And some of you made them fancy, some of you kept them nice and plain. I have a question. Last week I asked you, what did your membership card entitle you to? And this week I wanna know, did you use your membership card at all in the last week? Yeah. You, you did? Yeah. For discounts at the movie theater? <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Not yet. Did, wait, wait, wait. Did anyone try to ask for a discount at the movie theater? Just holding this up saying, hey, I got my religion outside the box membership card. I'd love to uh, get a discount. Did anyone get any discounts at all? No discounts. Okay, so there goes the stereotype about Jews. Just leave it. <laughs> Discount on anger. Discount on anger. Who got it? Who, who, did anyone get a discount on anger last week? I love it. So tell me, what did you use your card for? If you had your religion outside the box membership card, and I'm going to put up on the screen, there was some fine print that John wanted including, included on the card. And it said this, warning, use of this card and or activating membership may lead to an increased level of compassion, permanent blindness to difference in others, a striving to agape, urges mm -hmm. to form community, surging levels of joy and laughter. If any of these or other effects persist, celebrate and share them with mm -hmm. friends, other members, and anyone else who needs uplifting. Oh, that's beautiful. So you can uh -huh. write that on your, you can write that on your card yourself. 
It's up to you what you use your card for, but I'm curious to hear from some of you. What did you use your Religion Outside the Box membership card for in the last week? Oh, is that too, that's too big of a question to start with. So here's a little pedagogical thing is you have to always start with an easier question, which is how many of you have a Religion Outside the Box membership card on you? So you start with a question that people can all answer. And then you move up to a harder level question, which is, what did you use your card for? Al, you put your hand up. What did you use your religion yeah. outside the box membership card for? I had uh, some disappointments uh, personally and professionally uh, this week, especially yesterday. And I used my membership card to ask my partner for help with that. And she was very kind and understanding and compassionate and helped me uh, see, see through to the other side of that. So, Al, you're saying you actually asked for help? Yes. I know it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy idea. Um, yeah. Folks, how many of you might be able to use your Religion Outside the Box membership card to ask for help? Oh, Keep your hand up if it's easy to ask for help. There they go. All the hands went down. <laughs> it's hard. It's one of the bravest things to do to ask for help. It takes such vulnerability. It takes such <laughs> courage. It's really difficult to ask for help. I have a story about asking for help, which I'll tell in a moment, maybe. But Ron, go ahead. What what you got from your religion outside the box membership card? A reminder to be outside the box and the way I think and the way I approach people. Mm. Yeah. Let's remember not to do things normal. People don't usually accuse me of that. No, not not you. <laughs> what what else could you use your card for? What else do you wish you had <clears throat> used your religion outside the box card for last week? Go ahead, Dolly. Uh, it, if I had been here last week. I would have probably used it this week for patience yeah. to get it so that I didn't get triggered um, by my staff. It's hard. I could have used it a lot this week. It, it is hard. We were looking before we started broadcast at this quote from Corazon Aquino, keep inviolate an area of light and peace within you. And we were pointing out that it says keep, not make. That we always have this part of ourselves that we, we could keep inviolate, but it's not so easy to do. And when we get triggered, we, we, we really do lose our rational minds. And it's, when we're triggered, it's really hard to find that patience again. It's really hard to do. And peace with you. Ooh, that's beautiful. Peace. Go ahead, Can Candice. Was that your hand going up? Uh, no, I was just reaching for my mouse. Okay, don't don't. High school teacher here. Don't raise your hand at all. Make it look like you're raising your <laughs> hand, or I'm I'm gonna see you on the screen there. Um, on the celerant. It's okay. Go ahead, Ron. I just want to remind people who Corazon Aquino was. She was the president of the Philippines mm -hmm. after Marcos was removed from power. Before her, during Marcos' reign, was all sorts of violence and triggering and cruelty. And the dictator was replaced with Corazon Aquino. And I like to think, I love when I think of her, I think of her as a person of peace. Amen. Amen. There, there's a quote from Albert Camus, which I'm going to try to get up onto the screen in a moment. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Hey, I'm going to take a moment of peace right now because my computer is not doing what I thought it was going to do. Here's this Camus quote. 
In the depth of winter, I finally learned that within me there lay an invincible summer. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Here, here's yeah. the thing. Uh, how do we? How do we access that invincible summer? How do we access that inviolate area of light and peace? when we're out in the real world. Okay. Like we all get this now, right here where we are. We all understand that there should always be a place of peace within us. <laughs> but how do you do that when your 13 year old daughter just talks smack back to you? For example, in case you have a 13 year old daughter, <laughs> mine's 15, so it's, I'm not talking about me. <clears throat> how do we do that? How do we how do we keep that peace at the times when the the shit is real? Go ahead, John, and then Joe. Well, it struck me earlier when you were talking about the same thing that there's a little phrase. The phrase is in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's where the challenge lies. You have to recognize that in the moment, it's really difficult to find the summer or the the peace the place of peace yeah. but you know that in the moment it's difficult you know also that you will get there the more you recognize you will get there i think it, the more you shorten the time it takes you to get there amen i love it it's not a snap of the fingers or a flip of the coin it yeah. takes i i think there's a there's a word for it which is practice yeah, practice. Joe, what do you got? So, um, first of all, sometimes in the moment, it's impossible, and that's okay. Oh, wait a minute. Say that again, Joe. Yeah. In the moment, it's often impossible, and that's okay. That last part, I think, is, is and it's okay. We're all going to lose our cookies. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Go back, make amends, fix it up, either to the other person and or to yourself. And it's okay. We're going to lose our shit. The question is, how quickly can we get ourselves back to that peace? Do you have more to say, Joe? Well, um, so first of all, allowing myself to know that it's impossible in the moment. Say, for instance, February 9th, your daughters walk in and they say, hi, uh, your, your husband has cancer. That's an impossible moment to stay calm in any way, shape or form, because yeah. that's an ocean hitting you when you don't know it's coming. And it is impossible to be anything but, I don't know uh shock swept, swept under yes yeah. swept under so um i was thinking about how did i get from that moment to today and number one it's a process number two it's time number three um i've been thinking about that i've transformed the event of february 9th in an interesting way and so then i wondered how did i do that and i realized that it was done to me with me, for me, but not necessarily completely by me. That it, <laughs> it, it happened to you. Yes, and for me and with me. But I didn't, like, I didn't just wake up and say, I will now transform myself from the feeling I had on February 9th to the feeling I have on April 27th because cancer entered my home. It's been a process yeah. of lots of layering of things and i could not do it alone i love that i saw a graph once and it says what we think the path looks like is that but in reality what the path is is a little bit more like that that's exactly what it looks like <laughs> yeah thank you joe 
Betsy, yeah. what say you? Oh, a while ago, when you were talk, mentioning religion outside the box, I was just thinking outside the, the paradox is that outside the box is sometimes inside of us. <laughs> That, that we take on the things that are outside of us. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I mean you know, the th thinking outside the box requires thinking inside. About ourselves. Of us, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Go, go ahead, Ruth. Um, I want to come back to in the midst of winter. Mm -hmm. I saw those first couple of lines but discovered that there are a couple more that I think are very important. And that makes me happy, for it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me there's something stronger, something yeah. better pushing right back. Oh, that's beautiful. That's the full the full quote from Camus, and I only I only took a small sample of it this morning. All right. Let me see if I can't find the whole thing and put it up here. And I hope this is going to come in clean enough for us to all be able to read it. Thank you. Uh, and there was another hand, Jack. You're on mute, Jack. Yeah, I got it. The one thing that I have to constantly remind myself of is that I am a continual work in progress. Right. And, and aren't we all? Folks, I think I could, I would like to, to say that one aloud just to bring that back into my head. I am a work in progress. I am a continual work in progress. And Michael, and I'll get uh, to you in a second, but I want to ask, right. is there anyone else <laughs> who thinks it might be behoove them to say that aloud? Sure. We're listening. I am a work in progress. I'd like to add the word process. I am a continue, say, say the, your whole sentence out loud then. I would, I am a continual work in Process and progress. And the continual work in process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Here's the full Camus <clears throat> quote. He said, in the midst of hate, I found there was within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. I realized through it all that in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that makes me happy. And this is the part Ruth was getting at. For it says that no matter how hard the wor world pushes against me, there's something stronger, better, pushing right back. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Yeah. All right. Michael, what do you have to share with us? Um, it's it's I I'm feeling optimistic today, and uh, the the word uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the role of faith in this, capital F or small F doesn't matter which. Say it's, say it's, a little bit more. What do you, what do you, what does that mean that you're thinking about faith with regard to an invincible summer or that there's? Well, you got to believe it, right? And some things there's no proof until it happens, right? I love that. But you got to believe it's going to happen. Right. How is there going to be within us an invincible summer is that we believe there is within us an invincible oh. summer. Mm -hmm. I love that. Some people don't even know it's possible. Your Religion Outside the Box membership card comes with <laughs> belief in an invincible <laughs> summer, belief that there is calm within you. I love that. Thank you, Michael. Um, any any other things we want to talk about from our membership cards? I have a new a new question. Uh, is there anyone here who wants to share something with the group as a whole 
about their humanity in the past week? Humanity, okay. Is there something that you feel compelled to share with the group as a whole, if this is a community mm -hmm. made out of people who just decided to share in common, is there something that you would wish to share with the community as a whole about your humanity in the past week? And it might it might be that you don't have. But I thought I'd open it up to if there was something. Humanity. Go ahead, Michael P. Well, I... <laughs> I can't go into great depth because it's very complicated, but it has something to do with letting go of having to fix something that in the moment I allowed to start between two friends that seems that it could, uh, could mean letting both of them go. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds really hard. Very much. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else who has a thing that they really want to share with the group as a whole? It can be in keeping with the same theme or otherwise. We're going to try this again next week just to know that if they're <coughs> in the course of the week, there's something that comes yeah. up you want to share. Go ahead, Bob. And then Jeff. Well, I pride myself in being able to fix things. And that um, uh, what happened is I was changing the water filter on my sink. And that it's one of those twist ones. And it got twisted to be turned on before I had the filter all the way up in there. So I had water all over the place. Oh, dear. And I managed to get down in the basement and turn off the uh, thing. But there was another valve that I found that I could have gotten to sooner. So I could have been really hard on myself. <clears throat> but it happened. I, I got it fixed, got it wiped up and everything like that. And so I didn't have to beat myself up. Amen. I, I, your Religion Outside the Box membership card entitles you to not beat yourself up as bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Again, this is great to know. It's really hard to do in the moment. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, my my temple hosted their twenty fourth annual community seder this week, and we had eighty seven people. Wow. And part of the community that we invited was an imam from the local mosque, and he brought. 15 of his congregants with him. And so we all got to have a very respectful conversation about who we are and what we do in the, in the moment of sharing food and having a Seder. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you for sharing that, Jeff. That makes me so happy to hear that. Good. Me too. Um, I want to pick up on, is there anything else related to your religion outside the box membership card? Housekeeping that any, we're all, all right. Um, okay. I want to review something that we haven't talked about for a long while. And I'm going to first do a, a, a teach, a teaching. A, this is a, there was a gentleman by the name of Ellie Goldratt, and I have not used this for a while, but it's a great way of making decisions and seeing what's going on. And it goes like this. There's two axes going across. There's change, and there's not change. And there are benefits And there are detriments. There are benefits and there are detriments to change and not changing. So let's, before, we're going to talk about patience. 
And we're going to look at patience with regard to change and not change, having more patience. And if we were to just look at it, we would say, well, of course, it's better to have patience. But I want us to look, and we're going to spend a, a little extra time looking at these two quadrants, this quadrant and this quadrant. Before we do so, let me explain using placeholders what they are. So here we think of it this way, that if we change, we get a pot of gold. If we change from what we're currently doing, we get a whole pot of gold. Good for us. And if we don't change, and you, this might be terrifying. This is my drawing of a monster. I'm sorry if that's scary. <laughs> Need a dentist. A, that's a monster. It's it's meaner than you can even imagine. This monster is if we don't change, we think, okay, we don't change. We, we should change because there's a monster and we should go to change whatever it is that we need to change and we get a pot of gold. And then there are the two other quadrants and these are the ones that are, un, are, are fantastic for us to look at. This quadrant is called the mermaid. And I don't know how, that's a mermaid. <laughs> I like that in my drawings, I have to tell people, that's a mermaid, that's a monster, so now you know. Mermaids are allergic to gold. I'm sure most of you already knew that. Oh yeah. And so the, the thought is, and this is Gold Rat's hey. thought, is that if we change, we're gonna have to give up something that's good that we currently do. So here's not change. If we don't change, there's some good that's there that we will lose if we move up to the qua the quadrant on top. That if we have more patience, we're gonna lose something that we enjoy about not having patience. And then the last quadrant, this is a robber's mask. <coughs> That if we get the gold, all of a sudden we're going to have to deal with robbers. We never had to deal with robbers when we didn't have gold. Now that we have gold, we're going to have to deal with robbers. So I want us to take a moment to look at these four scenarios with patience. <coughs> this one, before we go to patience, this one is... Monster. That's a monster. If we don't change, right? Don't change... There's a negative of monsters. If we don't change, there's a positive of a mermaid. If we do change, there's the positive of gold. And if we do change, there's a potential, it's called a potential undesirable effect. There's a potential problem of a pirate, of a pirate, of a robber that we didn't know about. Explain to me the, the mermaid and not changing. Is this an ideal state? Uh, no. No, this is reality. Thank you, Michael, for asking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, your Religion Outside the Box membership card gives you the right to ask questions when you don't understand. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, does this, does, this, does this lesson involve the whole four quadrants yes. all the time? We're going to go one, one. You just can't of, stay with the top or the bottom. Right? You can't. And that we tend to advertisement is always about these two. Advertisement is, oh, is there a monster in your head? Try gold. It will help everything. But what okay. we're not talking about, and these are the two I want us to look at today, is the mermaid and the robber. If I don't have. So let's look at patience. The problem is I want to have more patience. And if I have patience, all my problems will go away. And I'll lose the monster. But I'm also going to lose something. There's some benefit to not having patience. And this one's a little bit hard for us to get our heads around. But help me out. If you don't have patience... What's the benefit? What's the hidden benefit to not having patience? You don't get used. 
Yeah. You don't get you. <clears throat> you accomplish things. You accomplish things. The things have an urgency. Ah, there's an urgency. I love that. I still don't feel so you don't good. change. If we don't, if we, if I have patience where I didn't used to have patience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose, and I'm going to put this one here, is I'm going to lose, oops, I'm off the screen. I'm going to have to give up my anger. I'm going to give up all of this rage and, okay, let's just be honest for a moment. Don't you kind of sort of really enjoy getting rageful? At least mm -hmm. in the moment. Wait, getting angry. Getting mm -hmm. angry. Getting yeah, angry like letting feels the pressure really... cooker steam. Yeah. Righteous, righteous anger. Yeah. I... If I have patience, I'm gonna have to give up my righteous anger. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want understand to... why it's a mermaid. Why the image of the mermaid? Not oh, because that. in in Gold Rats. Um, cockamamie theory mermaids are allergic to gold so if so? I so if I have patience oh. I have to give up my friend the mermaid because if I grab onto the gold my friend the mermaid is going to swim away Listen. it's just it's just the okay. so if I have patience I'm going to have to give up my righteous anger I think it's only oh, fair I see, I see. for us to see what it is we're being asked to give up if we have patience. Yeah, if you can learn. If somebody could do the following and find that rogue microphone and turn that mute, that one. I'd is there it. fear in that not change? Sure. Or Where would we put fear? If I have patience. What's up? Help me out. Where do we? I, well, I can't. If, Go if, ahead, Betsy. If um, we're afraid to change, I mean, could fear be part of the reason we would be afraid? Oh, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Is I don't like change. Right. Because I know what I've got there with my mermaid. Right. Right. I know what I have, and I don't like anything that's new. And if I'm going to get the gold, I'm going to have a life. If I'm going to have patience, I'm going to have a life that's not the life I'm used to living. Thank you, Betsy Ann. That's great. And the robber piece could ah. be if you're brave enough to, to do something new that patience will allow you to do, there are those naysayers uh -huh. that are going to try to knock you down. I didn't have to deal with the naysayers who say you are head in the clouds you're being you're you're go, you're going to be used you're going to i don't have to deal with the naysayers because i didn't change but if i change and let's move over to the robber quadrant if i change and i start to have patience i might lose the naysayers i might lose the friends i have i might have to get a new friend group because my friend group all runs on impatience John and then Dolly. One word that came to me as we were doing this is the to go to the upper left quadrant. My the word that comes to my mind is you care. If I care, go ahead. Well, the mermaid is oblivious, doesn't care. Doesn't matter. Can just let things oh, drift. oh 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 if i have patience and if i start to care it's going to break my heart in a way that i never had to deal with here the robber's going to take advantage of you i'm going to put that here too is i'm going to have a broken heart if i have more patience i love that these are these are real issues also uh, what what betsy ann was saying about i don't i'm not comfortable i'm not comfortable up here I'm really comfortable with my mermaid. I'm really comfortable with having the amount of patience I currently have. Dolly, you were going to say something. Well, then people take advantage of you. That's a worry. That's a future worry is that 
if I have patience, people will be taking advantage of me. Yes. Well, isn't the idea of the situation as close as we humans can get that we're somewhere in the middle? Like Jeff was saying, that Muslims and Jews sit down together for a meal and talk equally and with respect to each of them, to each other, without letting all the other stuff get in the way. It's a difficult thing to do, but that is where we really, really are aim for, aiming for, I think, instead of having one extreme or the other. It is is sitting in, in harmony. I agree with you. I agree with you. Lis listening. Listening to each other. Your Religion Outside the Box membership card entitles you to listen. Mm. <clears throat> Amazing what we can do. Okay. Um, the, so let, let's, sum, let's sum up. If you want to have more patience, you can have more patience, and that might be a really good thing. But you're going to have to lose. Just give me one... One thing that you have to lose if you're going to become more patient. It's a mess what I wrote. Well, for you, anger. for you yourself, what's one thing you might have to give up if you have more patience? Oh. Judgment. Have judgments. Judgments. Beautiful. <laughs> what else? Yeah. Righteous anger. anger. Righteous anger. Righteous anger. That's the yeah. one. Righteous anger. And if we habit. have more patience... We might now have problems that we never thought we were going to have. If we have more patience, we might blank. We might lose blank. We might now have a problem of blank. Friendships. We might we might really mess up our friendships. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I don't have patience, the advantage may be that I get immediate satisfaction. Yes. Yes. Even if it's anger. I have immediate satisfaction. Good. Yes. Okay. The bad thing with patience. Patient none none of the none of the things are all good or all bad. And that's what these two quadrants are trying to show us. We'll look at this again next week. I'll go over it one more time. The reason I wanted to bring this up was I asked last week, is there a topic or is there a thing that we haven't talked about that you want to talk about? And someone says, well, yeah, you have mentioned these mermaids. I have no idea what you're talking about. Because some of us have been to most of the 212 of these services and some people haven't. And if you have or you haven't and there's a topic you still want to ask, um, can you send me a message, send me a private message or send a message to Maria who promises to animon, anonymity, make it anonymity. Anonymity. Yeah, she uh, promises anonymity. to do that. Um, so that I if, do. If you have a, another question, I saw Jack's hand. Go ahead, Jack. Back on. Jack, we What's could not agree with you anymore, but we can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> uh, once I become a master of patience, I. I, I'm now no longer a slave to reaction. Ooh, really good. If you become a master at patience, you're no longer a slave to reaction. That's exactly it. Um, there's a, a great quote from, oh, who's the one who said the quote about between action and response, there is a space. And in that space- Victor Frankl. Victor Frankl. And in that well, and space- And Moshe Feldenkrais also. Yeah. And felt in Christ so, as well. Yeah. That between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space lies our freedom. Ooh. I knock on the bathroom door, find out what my daughter's up to, find out who's in the bathroom. And <laughs> I hear back my daughter's voice that just says, No. That's it. That's the stimulus. My response was not pretty, but I kept it to myself as opposed to acting out. 
and between stimulus and response, and I made that space a little bit longer so I didn't, and I wasn't the way Jack was saying it, I was not a slave to my reaction. I was able to at least choose a different reaction than the one I had in initially wanted to do. Hey, guys, is, I have an idea. Who is this guy, this this uh, author of this? What's his name again? Victor Frankl. No, no, not that, but the whole scheme. Oh, this whole, this whole thing, this is a... Ellie Goldrad, who is a Israeli um, physics teacher. Okay. How do you spell it? Just yeah. Goldrat? Goldrat with two T's. No, two T's. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and there was, Rabbi, there was someone else mentioned. I didn't get his name. Was it like Bender Christ or someone was mentioned? Fel Felden Christ. How do you say it again? Felden Christ. Building Christ, thank you. Yeah. First name is Moish. No, it's not. Okay, I'll know that. Moish. Oh, Moish. First name's Moish. Moshe. Moshe. Felden. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> we're gonna take take a moment. Um, oh, I forgot this last week. And Missy, do I have Missy? I don't see Missy's face. There's Missy. Hi, Missy. Hi. So if you would like, in about 20 minutes when we end this service part and then we go into small groups and it's not broadcast, for the first five minutes of that, if you would like, Missy is going to be hosting, I don't know what word to use, hosting the little breakout room uh, for here's my five minute commitment and just to have a place to be able to say, for the next week, I'm committing to lengthening, or whatever it is you want to commit to, but in the next week, I'm committing to lengthening this space between stimulus and response. Or in the next week, I'm making a commitment to notice what do I lose when I don't, when what would I lose if I had more patience? Or whatever it is you want to commit to looking to for a week. Because we know that if you say you're going to do something aloud, it's much more likely to happen. And so the idea is we're going to have these five minute, uh, a little room to have a five minute breakout. Okay, I forgot there was a whole nother topic. Hi, guys. Hi. Last week I made mention of behind every criticism is a commitment. And I wanted to just follow up with that. Behind every criticism is a commitment. And I'm wondering, is there something that happened to you in the last week where somebody was critical towards you that you can remember? And are you able to see the commitment within that criticism? I tell you about your phone. Yes, you do. Is there a thing that happened in the last week, a criticism that was leveled at you, and were you able to see the commitment within it? Because if you can, this is like alchemy. This is finding what was a piece of crap that was given to you and finding the good in it. I mean, <clears throat> crap is good for fertilizer, helps you to grow. By, by commitment, you mean... Um having compassion for something negative that's happening? Um, I'm talking somebody says to you, grow up, which is a com which is a criticism. Somebody says to me, grow up, Brian. When are you going to finally grow up? It's a criticism. But if I look at it right, and sometimes it takes really contorting your head a little bit to the side and looking over, and it's not so easy to see. It's like a a visual puzzle, can I find the commitment? Can I find within their critique, Brian, you need to just grow up already. Can I hear the positive that underlies their criticism? I think there's a joy of being childlike versus being childish. Yes. Yeah. And they might be a little bit jealous of my childlike nature. Yes. Yes. But their commitment. So it's, it's understanding them. It's it, understanding them. Having compassion for their um, is saying, invasions. Is seeing that 
this person who said to me, Brian, you need to just grow up, is actually trying to help me. Right. And if I no, can see no, that they're, they're trying to help me. Go ahead, Lenny. I don't like them. <laughs> you don't like them. I will t I will say your religion outside the box membership card comes with Lynn objecting to anyone who says anything obnoxious to you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I have a, I have an example. Yeah, Meg. My husband sometimes says to me, not in his best voice, I can't hear you. Now, that means I need to speak louder and probably slower. Behind that is the idea that he wants to know what I am saying. He is interested enough to right. know what I'm saying. That's exactly, yeah. exactly it. It's exactly it. That behind the criticism, you need to speak louder, is a commitment. And again, this is, a, this is not easy to do, is to see what is the commitment. Is He's committed to hearing you. He's committed to having that relationship. It's about Thank, the other person. It's about the other person. It's it's right. it's looking for. Well, that's what I say. It's their motivation, and and when you're at the same time you feel insulted, you're, you're you want to cultivate understanding, right? And and it it becomes is a very difficult game to play yeah, in real time. Is. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a week to figure out what the nice thing, what the commitment behind what that person was saying is. It's giving people the benefit of the doubt, looking, right? Yeah. Just look, Benjamin. Yeah, right, go so. ahead, Anne. It's also looking for go the ahead. positive in what they're saying. It's looking for the positive, and it's not easy to do. Sometimes it's really hard. Anne Swanson, you have a comment. Go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> sometimes the commitment is not just to the one person, but a commitment to a group. Uh -huh. So um, if there is, um, I will use a real example. I am part of a book discussion group and we needed to have uh, our, our moderator moved away and we needed to have a new sure. moderator and someone jumped up right away and said, I'll be the moderator. I've moderated before. I'll be the moderator. And that person forgot to come to the group for two weeks. <laughs> Meg is part of the group, so she knows what I'm talking about. And uh, we have talked among ourselves and just kind of agreed that uh, one or the other would pick up the role of moderator because this person is not able to do it mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Our commitment was to the group. So some of us are picking up certain pieces of being, being moderator. And it's not, <clears throat> we're not beating her over the head Right, right. Okay, but the commitment is to the group. It's a, which is a one, wonderful thing. Go ahead, Miss. Thank you, Anne. Go ahead, Missy. So I was just thinking about how hard it is to do, and you were saying, you know, sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it might take longer than that. I don't know if you said it, but it might. And it made me think about the lesson um, previously on forgiveness and how. Sometimes we have to accept the apology that's not been given first. Yeah. That that's a rock, um, your your audio's breaking up a little bit, Missy. Let me restate. There's a quote from Robert Brault that says, "An amazing peace can be found when we learn to accept the apology that was never given." A person who criticizes us is not going to apologize for criticizing us. Usually, they think that they're they're right it, it, if we can accept their apology and see that what they were doing they think was in our best interest it's really hard to do this this is this is jedi level spiritual <laughs> well it's psychological it is this is really hard psychological to do. 
Um, I have an idea. I'm going to try this and then we're going to do our prayer time. Hey, let's do a really quick graph here. Here's not change. Here's change. Here's the benefits. Here's the negatives. Taking in somebody's criticism as a commitment. If I take in somebody's criticism as a commitment, I am no longer going to be able to, I think it's the same answer we had before, I'm no longer going to have righteous indignation. And I'm also <laughs> going to be worried what's going to be over here. If, if I learn not to take their criticism to heart, if I learn not to take other people's criticisms to heart and take it instead as a com commitment, What's going to be problems that I never thought I'd have? What am I going to have to give up that I've enjoyed? You're going to have to make a change. I'm going to have to make a change. I dislike change. I'm going to have to give up hate. Can you believe what they said to me? That person told me to grow up. I'm going to have to give up Gossip. Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> you don't have to give it up. You can continue with, and you can continue to gossip and say bad about somebody, and you can feel justified in it because they started it. But you also could find instead. Hmm. <laughs> Just saying. All right, Maria, my friend, do you have a list of people for us to send light and love to today? I do. These are the people to whom we are sending light and love. Sheridan H, Anne, Ken and Joe, Carol O, Cullen and her family, Lorena Bradford, Jerry B and Joan D, Lisa, Michael, and Fallon, Gloria Jean, Lynn D, and Mary Wolf, Elaine, Barbara A, Nelke, and Frank, Marilyn, Jess, and Violet, Debbie, and Ray H. If there is another person in our community to whom we can offer light and love, please put their name in the chat and I will add them to the list in the clubhouse. And for the people who aren't named, but who are in our thoughts, we send them light and love as well. So we'll take a minute of time now to reflect on those who need some extra care. I have an exercise for us and you're going to have three different responses that are possible. One, pass. You can pass because your Religion Outside the Box membership card entitles you to say no thank you. Option one, you can pass. Option two, you can name something for which you are grateful, something that is worth celebrating. Option one, pass. Option two, something to celebrate, something that you are so thankful for. Or option three, tell us something you would like freedom from. So your three options are pass, something I'm grateful for, something that's worth celebrating, or 
And tell tell us which one of the three you're doing, because the 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 I'd like freedom from, and um, I'm celebrating something. So give us a hint which one you're about to do, and I'm gonna just go one little box at a time in the Zoom world, and see what kind of responses we get. Hold on. There we go. Hi, Maria. Would you like door number one, door number two, or door number three? I am going with door number two. What are you grateful for? What's worth celebrating? I am grateful for the return of spring. Amen. For the, birds, yeah. for the plants that are growing, for the flowers. Um, it's just, it for me, it's just wonderful. I'm just always in awe. Amen. And thank you, Maria, for doing that and for... Uh, Let's keep our answers to one sentence, please. I didn't previously say that um, so that we have time for everyone. Rita, pass, gratitude, or um, freedom from? Uh, I guess I would like freedom from uh, being in a wheelchair. Amen. Amen. Bob. As I approach 84, I am grateful for my help. Amen. Mm. John, past gratitude or freedom from? I'm grateful for the number of birds that are coming to the bird feeder every day. Amen. Al? Uh, I want freedom from unreasonable expectations. Mm. Mm. Amen. Dolly? Amen. Um, lots of gratitude, so I'm going to go with I'd like to freedom from righteous impatience. <laughs> Patricia and Mason. Uh, I would like to have freedom from pro procrastination. Amen. I keep trying. Put it off to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mason, do you want to add one in there, too? And <clears throat> folks, you don't need to yeah. put your hands up. I'm, I'm going to get to every box I can. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, freedom from snap judgments. Amen. Jeff. Freedom from pain. Amen. Eileen. Uh, gratitude to all the um, mental health helpers mm -hmm. out there. Harold and Connie, thank you. I'm grateful for the fact that Harold and I were able to move to be closer to our daughter. Oh. Amen. Harold. Uh, along the same lines, I'm grateful that things are moving along as well as maybe better than expected with this move and progress of our daughter. Amen. Beautiful. Alex. I am grateful that after a very long battle with the insurance company, my car is fixed and back in my hands. Amen. Woo -hoo. Yay. Anne. Which one? Uh, you, Ann, and Mayor. Oh. Um, all of the above. Um, freedom from uncertainty. Amen. Ron. I am grateful that my poetry is flowing out more easily than it has in quite a while. Beautiful. Beautiful. Meg. I am grateful for good friends. Amen. Candice. I want to be free of um, my procra my procrastination. There I go. Um, because it manifests, at least in one way, that's harmful to my health. So I'm praying for freedom from that. Amen. Um, and Emily. I celebrate rain that irritates me lately. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I am grateful for my ROTB membership card that includes people that care for me and my darling husband while we struggle. Amen. Amen. Betsy. Amen. Hey, I celebrate uh, the variety of different kinds of days in the spring, even though you know, others may say, oh, yuck, we've got a rainy day. I think, wow, it's wonderful to have different kinds of days. Amen. Thank you for the reminder. Steve. 
I celebrate Saturday mornings. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Betsy Ann. I want to celebrate that my broken wrist is healing. Good job. Uh, yeah. uh, Ruth B. I'm grateful that I can hear the birds sing because mm -hmm. I'm bionic. You are. You are bionic. Or implant. Wonderful. Paula. I would like freedom from fear. Let's have a group amen. 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 Uh, Jeff, I think you already got you. Yep. Uh, Ray. I'm grateful for Zoom. Amen. Yeah. Bruce. I'm grateful for my eyes because I, I like to read and read helps keep me sane. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful that I stopped procrastinating about going to a cardiologist and I went one days ago and I, I have to remember that when I think about it, I no longer have to be fearful or scared because I went. So I'm in a constant state of, hey, okay, you went. You learned what you have to do, and you're doing it. So forget the fear and the self-loathing that you didn't go to the cardiologist because you went. Good so job, I Lynn. So I of gratitude that what, what people were talking about, that I, I <clears throat> take care of my health and doing the right steps. Amen. Doug. I'm grateful that my children and grandchildren all live nearby and they can help me out and I can help them out. I love that. Thank you, Beautiful. Doug. Carol, you're on, you're on mute, my friend. There you go. I'm grateful that both my daughters and their spouses were here for Passover and I got to see them and that's just the highest thing that could happen. Wonderful. Amen. Anne, Amen. Anne Amen. Swanson. I am grateful for, I'm celebrating, getting to know at a deeper level um, my friends with whom I am speaking on a panel tomorrow. Beautiful. Ooh. Michael O. I'm grateful I didn't lose my shit yesterday with a telephone support person. Get me on the phone <laughs> for 90 minutes, fixing my problem in the most complicated way possible. Amen. Oh, well done, amen. Michael. Chad and Lisa. Uh, freedom from dental problems. Amen. amen. Lisa. I am thankful for be living to live in an area which we have a lot of choices for endodontist and dent and dentists for Chad's <laughs> dental problems. Oh, that's nice. Amen. Very sweet. Uh, Michael P. Um, grateful for emotional growth and the help uh, from which I received it. Wonderful. Maria, I th we started with you. Missy. I'm celebrating uh, budding new relationships. Oh, beautiful. Jack. Freedom from my ignorance. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. Derek. Freedom from regret. Amen. Amen. I'm going to add in freedom from being so uptight that the service has to end exactly at the hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard for me. But freedom to know that things can be a little loose. So let me stop the recording. Everyone wave goodbye to all the people who are watching elsewhere.